It's no secret that I love movies, but some of you may not know that I've also been a lifelong gamer. My first ever video game was the original Super Mario Bros. for the Nintendo Entertainment System, and I've been in love with gaming ever since. My whole life, I always wanted to see video games reach the same level of technical presentation that film had, and deliver the same sort of powerful and emotionally resonant experiences that had made movies so important in my life. There are many developers who have gotten close, many games that stand out as incredible experiences, but none that can match the cinematic prowess of Naughty Dog, at least in my opinion. Known in their early days for Crash Bandicoot and Jack and Daxter, when the technology was finally able to create believable human characters, they left behind their cartoonish roots in favor of telling human stories, beginning with Uncharted and then moving on to The Last of Us. Their games have been praised for many things, the beautiful graphics, the tight controls, the layered gameplay mechanics, but what always stood out to me was their sense of cinematic literacy. It was like playing a game designed by filmmakers as opposed to your typical video game developers. So let's break that down. First, it's impossible to talk about Naughty Dog and not mention the characters and the story. It's usually the first thing that someone will mention when reviewing one of their games, and not without good reason. Each character has a fully developed personality that separates them from the rest of the cast, each playing an important role in the story. In my latest video, I discussed the idea of intention and obstacle. For those who missed it, basically to create a believable character, that character has to have goals, and they need obstacles to stand in their way. The conflict created by the character's attempts to overcome those obstacles is where the drama comes from, and how a character-driven story is told. In The Last of Us and the Uncharted series, the plot is mostly non-existent, relying much more on the character building than anything else to immerse the player into that world. One great example of character development that I would like to single out, at the start of The Last of Us, Joel's daughter gives him a watch, which he keeps despite it no longer working. Your watch is broken. In the beginning, Joel wants nothing to do with Ellie, most likely out of the fear of growing attached to her. In a world like this one, no one is safe. The more people that you love, the more people that you stand to lose. But there's a great scene shortly after they meet when crossing between rooftops with Tess. You can sense Joel warming up to her, and then there, a brief little glance. No words spoken, no exposition needed. One quick look tells us exactly what he's feeling. Joel and Ellie's relationship is the heart and the soul of that game, and it's those little moments that are why we care so much about their story. That level of craft in the writing is almost impossible to find in video games, and is what I really think sets them apart from other developers. The writing, of course, is powerful on its own, but you still need the right actors to bring those characters to life. Something that really helps their performances is the way that the cutscenes are filmed on a stage with all of the other actors, just like a film set. This may seem obvious to developers now, but back when they first used these techniques on the original Uncharted, it was almost unheard of to have your actor provide both voice and body performance capture. But there are little nuances that happen when an actor is performing, and if you split up that performance between two people, you're going to lose that nuance. So this not only helps create a more authentic performance that's more in line with that of film and TV, but allowing the actors to share the same space also allows them to to play off of each other and improvise. A common phrase that you'll hear is, acting is reacting. If all the actors record their lines separately in a sound booth, there's no way for them to properly react to each other. And that's how you end up with robotic NPC conversations like this. I understand the Fighters Guild is hiring new members. Not bad work for some folks. I see. Bye. Take care. Now compare that to a conversation like this. Let's see what they need. What do you think you're doing? Keep driving. I got a kid, Joe. So do we. But we have room. Hey! Keep hey, driving, stop. Tommy. While that may not be the fairest of comparisons, I still think it proves the point. But of course, these are games. These performances have to be brought into the game world. And that's where the real unsung heroes come in. The animators. Just look at those facial animations. This game was on the last generation and looks better than most games coming out today. 
Up until Uncharted 4, all of the facial animations were hand keyed. Animators had to manipulate hundreds of variables to match up with the actor's performance for every cutscene in every game. And the payoff is obvious, even nearly a decade later, these characters still look great. The detailed animations don't just find their way into the cutscenes either, but are present in game as well. A great touch in The Last of Us is with characters' body language, specifically with Ellie. She takes a more reserved stance early on in the story as she's still getting to know Joel, and as she becomes more comfortable around him, her body language changes to reflect that. The animation, the writing, the performances all pool together to create what I believe to be the most realistic human characters of any video game, which is crucial to keeping players invested in such character-driven stories. And as anyone who's played a Naughty Dog game can tell you, it is those characters that make each game such a memorable experience. But of course, as film has taught us, it doesn't stop with the characters. While working on a medium like this, there are always other tools to use to create a truly cinematic experience, like music. The way the score is implemented honors the greats that have come before, using themes to recall certain emotions just like John Williams or Howard Shore would do. It helps that for The Last of Us, they brought on board Gustavo Santoalaya, a two-time Oscar winner known for his work on the films Babel and Brokeback Mountain. I could easily make an entire video discussing the importance of a strong original score, but in short, music can be one of the best tools to incite certain emotions from the audience, and each one of Naughty Dog's games takes great care to use its score effectively. A good example to study in film, the Harry Potter series uses Hedwig's theme as the main musical motif, and it is recalled in each film's opening with slight changes to reflect the tone of each film. The same idea was used to alter Nate's theme for the final installment of the Uncharted series. This is Nate's theme from the first three games. And then here it is altered for a piece titled A Thief's End. Changes in the theme reflect the changes in Nate. He's older, and it's a more mature story with much more at stake than ever before, and the alteration to the theme reflects that. That is just one example, but you get the idea. And then we have to talk about the visuals. Naughty Dog has always been known for pushing the technology past what many other developers even thought of as possible, but they go a step further than just crafting beautiful textures or models. They use principles of cinematography, the same principles that guide the best in film. Shot composition, lighting cues, color grading are all present in each game. They even add little touches like missing focus pulls, allowing camera shake, and restricting the camera to real world limitations by confining it inside the same space that the characters are occupying. Even though the camera isn't a real object and could easily be used to cheat its way through walls, they keep it all grounded in reality, which creates a film look that helps the games feel that much more cinematic and really just look beautiful. When all of these different pieces work together harmoniously, something greater than the sum of its parts is created. It's why I don't find myself concerned with the different criticisms that Naughty Dog has received over the years. The type of experience they create is plain and simple, not for everyone. And while I enjoy a simple gamer's game as much as the next guy, there's something to be said for a game that does its best to create a cinematic experience that functions as a playable movie. It's not to say there aren't other developers out there who do this really well, there absolutely are, but none that offer something quite the same way that Naughty Dog does. While playing through Uncharted and The Last of Us, the level of immersion I felt is second to no other game. I've never been as invested in a video game before, I've never found myself so genuinely moved by a story or its characters. These are the types of games I spent my entire life waiting to play, and I'm honestly so grateful to have had the privilege of experiencing them for myself. It's why The Last of Us Part 2 is easily my most anticipated game, because I know that I'm in for an emotional roller coaster that you just don't get with other video games. But of course, these are just opinions, and I don't get the chance to play everything that comes out, so let me know in the comments some other games perfect for cinephiles, specifically on the PS4, because, well, that's what I own. But I would love to find more games that give me that same feeling, as I've yet to find it anywhere else.
This video was brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. For those unfamiliar, Dollar Shave Club is a service that sends you high quality razors every month delivered right to your door. If you head over to dollarshaveclub.com slash filmradar, you can sign up today for just $1 for your first month. Seriously, no shipping, no hidden fees of any kind. Just $1 to get everything you need for a smooth shave delivered right to your door. It saves you time, it saves you a drive to the store, and most importantly, you're not sacrificing on the quality. So head over to dollarshaveclub.com slash filmradar and sign up for your first month and see if Dollar Shave Club is right for you. Also, I wanted to give a plug to my buddy John Fusco's Kickstarter. You may know him as a writer for Null no Film School, and he was actually the first person to ever post about one of my videos on a platform with that kind of audience, so he really helped bring my channel to a lot of new people who'd never have heard of me otherwise, and I feel like I owe it to him to help spread the word. There will be a link in the description for those who want to know more, but it would be really great to see some support go his way. He's played a huge part in the growth of this channel, and I would love to see this project get funded. Did. Thank you for watching my video. Uh, Naughty Dog was a developer I didn't know a whole lot about until just a couple of years ago, but I played through the entire Uncharted series, I played through The Last of Us, I genuinely really love their games, I didn't cover nearly everything about their games that I love, but I felt like this kind of summed up the most important things, at least as far as I could see them. As always, thank you to the people supporting me on Patreon, and thank you to anyone who signed up through Dollar Shave Club, that is another great way to help out the channel as well. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.